In today's video, I show you how to install and configure Duplicacy. Duplicacy is a GUI-backed backup solution for Unraid. It supports numerous backup targets, including Backblaze B2, Amazon S3, Google Drive, Dropbox, and many more. It has deduplication, encryption, and more built right in. I think it's a great backup solution for Unraid. Let's get Duplicacy installed. All right, over here on our Unraid server, first thing I'm going to do is go to my apps tab, and we're going to search for Duplicacy. In the search box, I'm going to type in D-U-P-L-I-C-A-C-Y. Press Enter. A couple different options here. I'm going to choose the monthly spotlight option. This is the one I've been using on my server, and it's been working great. So I'll click Install. And I guess at this point, before we get too far into this, that you should know that this is a licensed software. The licensing costs are pretty low, so I wouldn't let that stop you. I've used a couple different backup options before and had mixed results. This one has been rock solid. It's just worked. That being said, let's move on. We're going to scroll down since there is a port number here. Let's scroll down a little bit further and expand show Docker allocations and check and see if that port number is in use anywhere else on our Unraid server. Find the port, double click on it so it's highlighted, hit Control F on the keyboard, brings up the find feature within the web browser, and it shows two results. They're both right there. If this is your first time watching my videos, then I do this because down below with these Docker allocations, if it's in use already here, we're going to run into a problem. So I make sure to expand that so it's showing all of them. I do the find, and if there's nothing down there, the port's free and we're good to go forward. Like I said, it's only showing two results, so it's free, and we can move forward. I'm going to close this Find Feature, click in a little X there, and we'll move on. Underneath Port, we've got the user data. This is the root location of your data. You can set this to whatever you'd like, but I'm going to set it for my slash MNT slash user folder. You can either click in here and type that location in, or you can just browse to it. So I'm just going to type in slash MNT slash user, and we'll click off there somewhere, click back in just to make sure that the default shares are showing up. This looks like everything we need. It's got app data, it's got backups, it's got media locations, it's got pretty much all the shares. You could go under individual disks if you wanted, but that's a bit more of a pain. I find that this is the best option. That being said, let's move on. Now that we're done with the Docker allocations, we can go ahead and hide that. At the very bottom, we'll click apply. It's pretty quick to install, so once it's done, Go ahead and hit done. Now let's jump over to our Docker tab and we'll get into the configuration. Over in your Docker tab, we will find duplicacy in the list. Over on the right, I would highly recommend turning on the auto start so that it starts up automatically whenever you start up your server. Back on the left, we'll find its icon. We'll drop down and select web UI. First thing that it's gonna want is a password. It's always a good idea to have a password. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Go ahead and choose a secure password. I'm going to do my super secret password and we'll click set. Now we're logged into Duplicacy. Pretty easy, pretty clean interface. Let me show you what we need to do first to set it up. First, let's get rid of this stupid cough. All right, over on the left, first thing we're going to do is go down to storage. Here you'll find several different storage options. We can store it to a disk, an SFTP server, S3, B2, which Amazon, Backblaze, iDrive, Google Drive. Over on the right, you'll find more. We'll click on more and you'll see some more options there. The one I'm going to choose right now is Samba because I'm going to back up from one Unraid server to another Unraid server. If you want to do a cloud service, which is where my main production machine goes, I have mine set to go to B2, which is Backblaze. And this is more off-site long-term storage. If you don't like paying the fees, which I get, you can always just set up another server at another location you know, another vacation home or family members or a friend's house or something of that nature. And you can just have it back up there. It's kind of nice if you've got another friend that's using Unraid, you can just have dedicated space for each and you can back up each other's servers. That way, if theirs goes down, you've got a copy of their data. If yours goes down, they've got a copy of your data. Works out pretty good that way. But for my demo machine here, I'm just going to set it up to back up to my other local machine. So let me show you how to do that. We'll click on more. We'll drop down and do Samba since it's a Samba share. So for server, you're going to enter the IP address for your other Unraid server. So I'll go ahead and type that in. So for username, you're going to put in the username on that server and then the password associated with that account. And then under share over on the right, we're going to click on the little browse option over there. It's going to log in 
look at the shares that are there, and then you can choose where you want it to back up at. I have a share on that server named backups, and that's where I put local backups for stuff. So I'm going to choose that. Once you've got that selected, go ahead and hit select. All right, next time we've got directory. Inside of your backup share, you're probably going to have other directories in there. I have one designated for this video for demo. So I will click on the folder icon on the right hand side to browse, look through the list. I'll find demo and I'll hit select. So any backups that are going to take place on this machine are going to go into this folder, the demo folder inside of my backup share. Once you're happy with your, all your selections, go ahead and hit continue. Now we've got to configure the storage. What do you want the location named? So in this case, I'm just going to call this my Unraid server. And note, there cannot be any spaces. Next field down, we've got password and then repeat. So put in a password and then repeat the password. This is optional. However, this will encrypt it if we put in passwords here. So I'm definitely going to put in that. Put in your super secret password. Repeat that password. And it will jump down to compression. These are different compression schemes that are available. The LZ4 is the default. And I'm going to leave it there. You can drop down and do a faster one, a better one, best one. Those take different amounts of time. LZ4, I've had great results with on my main server, so I'm gonna leave it on the default. Next, you've got the option for erasure coding. I'm gonna leave that off. And just so you know, erasure coding is a data protection technique that enhances fault tolerance and storage efficiency in distributed systems. It works by breaking down data into smaller fragments, encoding them with redundant data, and distributing these fragments across multiple storage locations. Basically what this means is that it allows for data reconstruction even if some fragments have been lost or they're not available anymore. Since this is not my only backup, I'm not gonna worry about it, I'm just gonna leave it off. Next we have RSA encryption. I'm not gonna use it, but if you wanna use it, you turn it on and then you browse to your RSA public key. Once you've got your storage configured, go ahead and hit add. All right, now you'll see in the top here, the Unraid server, this is our storage that we just created. So now over on the left, we need to create a backup. All right, under the backup tab here, you'll see duplicacy dash Unraid and trial. This is a trial license, it's valid for 30 days. We've got 29 days left remaining. For now, let's just carry on and we will set up a backup. Over on the right hand side, top corner, we're gonna click the big plus there to add a new backup. All right, add new backup. All right, here under directory, we're gonna to browse to the location that we want to back up. In this case, for the demo here, I'm just gonna do photos, keep it nice and simple. Click on the browse icon over on the right. The top option here, backup root, is the location that we had set up in the installation side of it. We'll double click on that, go into it. Looking under there, you'll find all the shares, all the stuff that's on the demo server. My photos are under data, then media, and photos, right there. Once you've got your data selected that you wanna back up, We'll click select in the bottom right. You'll see the directory of what's being backed up, where it's going, in this case, our Unraid server. That's the one that we just created. You can set up other backup locations, so you can just drop down and select whatever you want there. We just have the one now. Next, we've got backup ID. Here, we're gonna create a name for this backup. You wanna put in a name that describes what it is and where it's going. So I'm gonna put something like this. It's going to our Unraid server under backups and then demo. Each one of these backup IDs need to be unique. So I like to keep it simple so I can just look at it and go, oh, all right, that makes sense. It's a backup that's going on my Unraid server under the backup share in a folder called demo. Simple. Once you're happy with everything, hit save. And there you go. Your backup is set up. If you want to run a backup now, this play button right down here in the bottom left, you would click on that and it would run through and start the backup. I'm not going to do that right now. For now, I'm gonna go over on the left-hand side and we're gonna schedule the backup because this allows us to run it on an automated schedule. So we'll click over to schedule. We'll give it a name. I'm gonna call it demo daily. It's a daily backup and it's for my demo video. Starting time, you can set this accordingly. Click into a field, up, down, whatever you need it to be, AM, PM, whatever. I'm gonna leave it on midnight. And then frequency is next. How often do you want it to run? You can run it every hour, every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, lots of options. Since it's named daily up here, I'm going to just choose daily. And then what days do you want it to run on? You can choose every day of the week or just individual days, every other day, whatever you want it to be. I'll leave it on every day. All right, next we've got maximum runtime. This is the maximum runtime that you want the backup to run. So it's you're putting a time cap on it. Setting it to all zeros means unlimited. You're just going to let it run and back up until it's done. 
which is what I want. So I will click save now. Now you see under the schedule here, we've got the name of it. It's scheduled at 12 a.m., runs daily, every day. From here, we're gonna click add a job so we know what job we want this schedule to run. We've only got one set up, so everything there should be good. We'll click save. And now you'll see that the scheduled backup, how often it runs, and which backup it's supposed to be. Now at the very bottom, you can hit the play button to have it go run it right now. Or if you look at the schedule here right next to it, the next run is going to be 9 hours, 41 minutes, and 3 seconds. 2 seconds. 1 second. No seconds. Next option on the left we have is restore. We don't have any backups yet, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button here to run a quick backup. All right, this is going to take a few minutes to finish up. So in the meantime, if you're getting some value from this video, why don't you go down there and hit the like button and the subscribe while you're there. I'll be back in a moment. All right, I'm back. That didn't take too long. So now let's go check out the restore options. Over on the left, click on restore. You're going to choose your storage server. In this case, it's my own RAID server. It's the only one I have. Backup IDs, you can drop down and select the backup that you want to restore from. In this case, this is the Unraid server backups demo. It's the one I want. If that was some random alphanumeric thing, you wouldn't really be sure what it was. That's why I name it that way. All right, next time we've got revision. This is the backup that you want to choose from. If you've got multiple revisions, multiple different backups that's been ran, you know, like because it's daily, if it's ran the last seven days, you're gonna have seven different revisions. So you just click in there, drop down, select the one you want. I've only got the one, so obviously that's the one I'm going to choose. Next time we've got Restore 2. This is basically asking where do you want to put the restored files. Over on the right-hand side, we'll click on the little folder, and we'll browse to where we want the files to go. I'm going to go into my Backup Root folder. Earlier, I've created a folder under Data in here called Test Restore, which is where I put all my restore data at. So I'll choose that option and hit Select. Down below, we're going to click on the revision. So revision one should have a little check mark next to it now. Now at the very bottom, we can click on restore. I'll let that go through and do its thing, and we'll be back when it's done. All right, I'm back. Looks like we've got one second left, which is probably going to be more than a second. Microsoft time. Yep. All right, as this finishes up. Oh, there we go. All right, so now once the restore has been done, you'll see the results of the restore. Now you'll see at the top here, it says 7,533 files have been successfully restored. Great, whole log of all the files. Very top right, we've got the X to close out of that. Now let's go browse to our restore location and see what, what we've got there. I'll open up a file explorer window, drag that over here. I'm on the demo server under data, looking at this location here. And then we're looking for a temp restore. We'll scroll down, find it in the list. And then all the restored files will show up in here. Open them up. Yep, it's got data. Go back one. Profile. Yep. Image libraries. Thumbnails. Uploads. All kinds of stuff. Everything's there. Perfect. So now, since I put this in a location that is a temporary store location, I can either choose to get rid of it or move it to where I want it to go to live its life. If this is a one-off restore, then I typically do this. I move it to my temp location here. If you know for sure that the information is gone and you want to go back to its original home folder, then the restore option here, you would just choose exactly where you want it to go. So put it right back to your photos and all the data would just get dumped back in there and you'd be done. All right, we're all done with the restores. So over on the left, let's go under settings and talk about that real quick. That's all there really is here. There's not much. The only thing I ever do, if anything, is just to change the encryption here. Last option is the forum. If you want to go talk to people, ask questions, that kind of stuff, it's a great place to go. But the last thing I want to cover before we're done with the video is the licensing. So let's go back up to backup. Off to the right here, you'll find the word trial. If you hover over it, it shows you how many days are left in your trial. If you click on that, it'll bring up the option to paste in a license code. Under license activation, it shows you that it's running with a trial license and that it'll expire on this date. Paste in your new license code here, hit activate, and you're good. Let me go show you the licensing options real quick. Let me bring the page up. I'm going to open a new tab, paste it in, and I'll leave this link down in the description. I had reached out to Duplicacy to see if I could get a discount code or something for you viewers, but they haven't responded yet, and it's been, I believe, seven days, so apparently they're not going to. But here, under license types, you will see that there are personal and commercial licenses. There's also a CLI license, so it's command line only. 
Down below, it gives you a little chart, breaks down the cost for each license, their limitations, that kind of stuff. So on a personal license, which I'm assuming that's what you're going to be running, the limitation, it can only be installed on one home computer to back up your personal files. Support, you've got public forums only. And then what you're really wondering is the cost. The first year here is $20 for the first computer. If you have additional ones, they're $10 each. So half the cost, not bad. And then each subsequent year, you get a good discount. $5 for the first computer and $2 for each additional. To get a license, it's pretty simple. You click get licenses, it starts the process. And I believe when you purchase your license, you have the option to purchase a lifetime license, which is basically 10 years worth. So for a lifetime license, it's going to be $20 for the first computer for the first year, and then nine more at $5. So 45 plus 20, $65 for a lifetime license. That being said, it's getting kind of late in the year. Fall's coming up on Black Friday of last year. I picked up a lifetime license for $45. Something to think about. You can buy one year, wait until Black Friday. If they have that sale again, you can get a pretty good discount on the remaining nine years. That being said, if Duplicacy does get back in touch with me and they give me some kind of discount code, I'll put that down in the description and I will pin it to the top of the comments just so it's readily available. But until then, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get early access to my videos and they are ad and sponsor free. I'll leave a link in the description. Until then, check out one of these next. I'll see you in that one.